thousand dollars in our account. Go going live. Okay. Okay. Looks like it says we are streaming on Facebook. Says it's redirecting me to the page. So welcome everybody. Let me make sure I can get on here and be able to see the chat and everything, and then mute this so that we don't have competing audio. There we go. Excellent. Cool. Now I can see everybody jumping on. I can see the chat now. Perfect. Excellent. Good morning <laughs> to you and everybody else. How are we doing, Dad? I'm doing great this morning. Good, good. Apologize for the delay. For those of you who have seen this event being promoted on Facebook, on our Habit Finder page, uh, this is where my dad and I will be on Thursday mornings about 15 minutes earlier than this, but this was the third morning in a row. We've woken up with a whole bunch of snow we weren't necessarily planning on. So it's been, it's been quite an experience around here the last couple of days. It feels like the last 48 hours have been to make up for uh, the lack of snow we had all of last season. And uh, it's getting to be quite a lot, but we made it a couple of quick technical difficulties, but we're on and we're on live. Now we don't have as much time because of because of the delay, so I want to jump right into this. Um, Dad, I put the title of this session, just what came to me from the conversation we were just having, and that is that awareness is overrated. You know, <laughs> we, we talked about breakthroughs and ahas, and we're not anti-breakthrough or anti-aha, but the challenge is, then we've been studying this with over 100,000 entrepreneurs, we get an aha, we get this idea, that then creates this emotional peak of, oh, that's why. But then we still aren't able to actually change it in our physical reality. And you said something to me this morning as we were chatting, you, you talked about how you, we're working with these people that, that think that if they can just figure out why they're not doing it, then, then magically they'll do it. But there's some really important ingredients for that to happen. I, I wanted to just re-engage that conversation right on here with where you were going, what you were talking about. It really boils down to something simple. It's the questions we ask. Craig Case's new book, Big Idea, which is just awesome about aha moments, because we're absolutely all in aha moments. It's the question you're asking when you're in that alpha state, that you're, you're meditating, you're pondering, the connections are coming together, and you get that, that, that gamma spike, that aha moment. It depends on the questions you're asking. Because if the question you're asking is, why can't I take action? Why can't I just do it? Then we end up in all this endless trying to gain more awareness, more understanding. And when we finally get to the bottom, we go, oh, that's why. <laughs> Guess what we still need to do? <laughs> Take action. Let's ask a different question. How could I create that? How could I create that? So all of a sudden we're saying, Okay, I want to. I, I see this possibility. I want to create that, and we're exploring what are the steps that I can take. And Og talks to us in Scroll Nine, which is Og Bandino Scrolls, greatest salesman in the world. Scroll Nine. I will act now. The most quotable scroll of all of them. He says this. He says, "Henceforth, I'll remember the lesson of the firefly. He gives off his line only when it's on the wing, only when it's in action. Light is." a metaphor for inspiration. So if we're looking for inspiration, we get into action. Then he went on to say, my procrastination, which has helped me back, was born of fear. And I recognize this mind from the depths of all courageous hearts, core heart of hearts. Remove the flutters of my heart, I must act without hesitation. And only action reduces a lion of terror to an act of equanimity. We learn that we don't get rid of the fear and then take the action we take the action to get rid of the fear. So let us ask better questions. Mm. How can I create that? Oh, okay, I'll go do that. I'll go do that, I'll go do that, I'll go do that. Not, why am I not doing it? And trying to get an answer to that question and spend endless hours in seminars and reading books trying to overcome our lack of action by some magical formula. <laughs> the formula is, you gave a speech on this once. Remember when you said, just? Yeah. One ready, for the seven. money, two to get ready, or three to get ready, three to get ready, three to get ready, three. Oh, I need a book. 
I need a speech. I need a, and then you just got to jump. I love in scroll nine, Og points out very clearly that there is action and there is fear. They are total opposites. That, that fear is only combated effectively with action. And then we learn and we find inspired ideas along the way. And I, I find it so interesting that when I ask people why they aren't taking more action, what's, what's holding them back in life? We, there's, there's some people that have made fear more than it is, because you and I talk about fear, the most common acronym, false evidence appearing real, false evidence. You know from the onset that whatever you're feeling isn't true. So, oh, I'm afraid of failure. Well, if it's false evidence, then you know you aren't afraid of failure. There's something else going on, or I'm afraid of this, or I'm afraid of that. So I've seen it go two directions. Dad, I've seen people go down the path of increasing their fear exponentially so that they have a bigger excuse for staying stuck. Or I've seen people go the other direction and turn the fear into something else. I'm confused. I'm not sure what I should do. And I'm usually talking to someone who's attended every training and has called their mentors and been told what they should do. It's not that they really don't know what they should do. It's that in that moment, the fear has converted itself into confusion and confusion is now keeping them stuck, but the source was still fear. And if the source was still fear, then the solution is still get into action. Don't overdo it. You know, we talk about burning the ships and, and it's not burn the ships and then turn around and go charge blindly, you know, make sure you got the supplies off the ships and you're, you're looking for constructive ways of doing things, but confusion, what are other things that you've seen fear turn into as we get older and more professional and we don't want to say I'm afraid, but over time that fear has turned into confusion. It's what else have you seen in your clients fear turn into? I'm going to set it up this way. Okay. Because we know the false evidence can just be a, a wrong concept, but for most people, that we talk to who are entrepreneurial, they've got these very active minds, very visual, very obsessive thinkers, like, you know, what listeners, what do you do to quiet your mind? It's going all the time. And if it's not going in a constructive way, it's going in a destructive way. And so many are spending endless times worrying. And when we're in worry, our sympathetic nervous system is releasing cortisol. It's a stress hormone. You know, mm -hmm. it goes down and connects to the cell and the sugar fiber. And it communicates a message, not, not a fluid exchange, it's an energy exchange. It's to speed up metabolism and heal wounds because we're going to be attacked by an enemy. And so we actually feel at a cellular level this anxiety. Mm -hmm. We live in a society right now that's just buried in anxiety. Well, anxiety is coming primarily from worry because life isn't showing up the way I have been fantasizing it. I have these expectations and it keeps showing up differently well the message really is that boy there's a lot to cram into a sentence or two right <laughs> take our life circumstances our clay create the most we can with it and celebrate create and celebrate create and celebrate instead of living in our mind and holding life hostage and having these cortisol surges in our amygdala dan goldman at harvard calls it the amygdala hijack our fight or flight center gets hijacked and it shuts down our prefrontal cortex, our empathy, our practical judgment, our common sense renders us emotionally paralyzed. And we have to say this to, to this this morning, Paul, both of us have mm -hmm. faced things in our lives that we waited a long time to actually do. So we want to give grace to anybody who's watching this morning is going, yeah, okay, that's fine. That's the past. The question is, what's the decision today? Hmm. I keep having this incredible experience at 40 minutes into my treadmill experience every morning, about 40 minutes in, I've had my heart rate at 80 to 95% of its maximum rate for 40 minutes. Well, 30 minutes because a 40 minute workout it takes 10 minutes to get there, but for 30 minutes, and I have this incredible feeling of accomplishment and I turn as if, as if my dad and mom are there. They passed a couple years ago. You know, the feelings of, I, I did it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I did it. This wonderful feeling of having accomplished it. And what's happening, and you've experienced this. This is physical exercise from 257 down to 188 this morning. So this is very exciting, right? Just all 
<laughs> all this happening. You get to a point, I woke up this morning and I, I was at the office till nine o'clock last night. Came home, spent our time with Ramona. We spent time in the infrared spa. We read our scriptures together. We prayed together. It just got done a little later than usual. <laughs> and, you know, I'm going to sleep going, I, I really need to sleep soundly because 5.30, I got to be up at 5.30. We're going to be at the office at 7.30 this morning. So at 5.30 this morning, I, I woke up before the alarm went off, which is great. And I said, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. I was talking to my team. Those are my healthy habits of thinking. My unhealthy habits of thinking, uh, as, as Helen Irwin called it, Team Helen. I call it Team Dave. Okay, Team Dave, let's do it. Leapt out of bed, got everything on, jumped down there, and I was on the treadmill before I started thinking about whether I wanted to do it or not. That happens in time. Hmm. But for those who are stuck today, they're just stuck. They can't just do a little something more today than you've done. Don't try to make 15 phone calls in your business if you haven't been making any. Mm -hmm. Make three. Just do the three and celebrate the three. And then do three more and three more because this is the conclusion. I got to where I am physically now and I'm still not where I want to be, but I am, wow, it's incredible. It came to the conclusion. One day at a time compounded. We live in our mind. We want it to just happen. It doesn't work that way. We create these things in linear time, intangible, I'm slowing down intentionally, intangible reality. Ugh. I just created three Learjets in a nanosecond. You know, it doesn't work here that way. Here, we created a millimeter at a time. Let's start living here, millimeter, taking the actions and developing the habit. We'll do more and more and pretty soon, We'll leap out of bed at 40 minutes in. We'll be celebrating and feeling so different about our lives. That is a promise that's waiting for anybody who's just been mm, holding back. Make this the day to take the action. Totally. Thank you. I, as I was sitting there listening to you, I was thinking of um, the, the gr our growth, especially with the challenges between our healthy dialogue, our real voice, and our unhealthy habits of thinking that we can surgically and scientifically measure with the habit finder technology that I was just thinking about the fact that a lot of our growth is counterintuitive. And I want to leave everybody with this and a, and a practical tip to help you sh start shifting it a little differently. And that is that most people who are having a hard time getting in action are busy, which sounds weird. Oh, I'm not taking action. How could I be busy? there's a big difference between being in action, the way Og talked about it in scroll nine and, and the way the firefly lights up and, and, and finding that in our, in our soul and in what we do. But most people that we find that are not in action, not in creation, which is what happens when you find action and frequency, action and consistency, it turns into creation, is they're busy. And I love Daniel Putnam said that, that man's number one tool for maintaining self-deception is to be busy all the time. And so here's a tip for you before uh, my dad and I have to jump off because we've got clients back to back all day. A lot of exciting things happen, a lot of amazing lives to, to impact um, is do this. I want you to make a list, an inventory of what you feel like you're supposed to do in your life, your business, your relationships, your responsibilities in the community at home. Make a list of what you feel like you're supposed to do every week or even some of you are so busy that just making the list what you're supposed to do every day. And I want you to take that list. I want you to prioritize it based on your most important goal for 2019. Prioritize it. Then I want you to cut the list in half. Completely eliminate the second half of the list. Now, things like take a shower shouldn't be on this list because that's that should be automatic. Okay, the, You know, things like that. Um, you breathe, you shower. Yeah, exactly. You breathe and shower and eat. Take, take care of the top three but then cut out the other half. Then I want you to reprioritize it. You'll be amazed at how often when you cut out some of the clutter, you actually see a little clearer in terms of what the priorities really should be for your top goals. Then reprioritize it. Then I want you to cut it in half one more time and then just double check the priority. And here's what you can do. Take that now 25% of your to-do list and see if you can't master that for the next two weeks before you allow yourself to start reinserting anything. 
Because I've found anecdotally that the longer the list, the less likely you are to get even 10% of it done. And we're talking about mastering 25%. So that's double what most people can do that are busy. When we're busy, we get about 10, 15% of the things actually effectively done that we want to get done. So cut your list in half, reprioritize, cut it in half one more time, and trust yourself to just focus on that with your productive time for the next two weeks, and then start to feed it back in. So that, as you were saying, Dad, it's action that we can actually build from incrementally from where we're at right now. With that, we've got to jump off. Looking forward to being on here with you, Dad, and with all of you, our audience, uh, on Thursdays, 7.30 a.m. Mountain Time. Take care, everybody. We and love you're, you. off to, you're off to the cabin with clients tonight. Have a great weekend snowmobiling. I am. That's the benefit of the snow. We're going to have some epic snowmobiling tomorrow. I'm excited. Thank you. Okay. See you, everybody. Bye-bye.